This video will be an example of computing the extent of reaction for a chemical reaction. So the reaction we're going to look at here is the isomerization of 2-butene. So we have Z-2-butene, what you might call cis-2-butene, and it is in equilibrium with E-2-butene, or trans-2-butene. So we can write this reaction as Z in equilibrium with E. So if we build our ice table here, we have the reactant Z, the product E, and the total pressure of the system. We have what their initial pressure is, what their change in pressure is during the reaction, and what their equilibrium pressure is going to be. And we're going to assume that we start out with the uh, Z2-butene at a pressure of one bar. E is at a pressure of zero bars. So the total number of uh, the total pressure initially is one plus zero is one bar. The change that occurs during the reaction is going to be, well, the coefficient on each side is just one here. So we have minus C, minus C for Z. We have plus C for E. So minus C plus plus C is equal to zero. So there's no change in the total number of moles during the reaction. Uh, at equilibrium, we have one minus C for Z. We have plus C for E. We have one minus C plus C, which is equal to one for the total number of moles. So this equilibrium total number of moles is both a sum of this column and a sum of this column. Okay, so what is the final pressure of our reactant? That's equal to uh, its, that's equal to its uh, equilibrium pressure divided by the total pressure times the total pressure of the system. So from Dalton's law of partial pressures, the pressure of a given component is equal to its mole fraction times the total pressure, assuming that we have ideal gases, which is what we're doing thus far. So we have 1 minus C over 1 times P, which divided by 1 is just going to equal 1 minus C, because P is always going to be one bar for this reaction. The pressure of our product, the E isomer, is equal to C over 1 times the total pressure. So divided by 1 just leaves C. The total pressure is going to be 1 bar here. So our pressure in bar is just going to be C bars. Whatever our extent of reaction is, we have that many bar of pressure of our, of our product, and we have 1 minus that many bars of our reactant. Okay, our equilibrium constant is equal to the ratio of our product over our reactant to the power of their stoichiometric coefficients. So E is to the power 1, its coefficient. Z is to the power 1, its coefficient. React products on top, reactants on bottom. So the equilibrium constant is going to be equal to C over 1 minus C. The standard reaction Gibbs energy is equal to minus RT times natural log of the equilibrium constant, which is equal to the standard Gibbs energy of formation of our reactant minus the standard Gibbs energy of formation of our, of our sorry, of our product minus the standard Gibbs energy of reaction of our rea Gibbs energy of formation of our reactant. Okay, so we can look up both of those values uh, in a table. I looked up that for the Z isomer, it's 65.9 kilojoules per mole. For the E isomer, I'm going to say it's 63.0 kilojoules per mole. So the standard Gibbs energy of the reaction is each of their coefficients times their standard Gibbs energy of formation, positive for products and negative for reactants. So that's 63.0 kilojoules per mole minus 65.9 kilojoules per mole. Uh, e minus Z, which is negative 2.9 kilojoules per mole. All right, so my equilibrium constant, so delta RG naught equals minus RT log K. If I rearrange this for K, divide both sides by minus RT, take it to the power of E. Equilibrium constant equals E to the minus delta RG naught over RT. Substitute in values there, E to the minus negative 2.9 kilojoules per mole divided by 0 0.008314 kilojoules per mole Kelvin. 
So the gas constant, remember, is 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. So if I take that to kilojoules, I divide it by 1,000, get 0 0.008 times. I'm going to assume this reaction is at 298 Kelvin. Uh, if you're told otherwise, just pay attention to whatever temperature you're told the reaction occurs at. But I'm going to do this for 298 Kelvin. So if I substitute in uh, those values and I take e to the negative that number, what I get is 3.222 which we'll remind ourselves from our ice table up here is equal to C over 1 minus C. So I have 1 minus C times 3.222 equals C if I cross multiply there. So that means that C equals 3.222 over 4.222 when I rearrange the algebra. Or the final value of the equilibrium extent of reaction is equal to 0 0.76. Right, so our equilibrium pressure of the Z isomer is P times 1 minus C, which is 1 bar times 1 minus 0 0.76, or 0 0.24 bar. For the E isomer, the final concentration, or the final pressure of it, is going to be C times the total pressure, so 1 bar times 0 0.76 is 0 0.76 bar. So my equilibrium pressures of these two, using uh, the stoichiometry of the reaction to develop an ice table to get me an expression for the equilibrium constant, and then using the standard Gibbs energy of formations to get the standard Gibbs energy of reaction, find the equilibrium constant and solve for the extent of reaction, substituting in, giving me the final uh, concentration of each uh, species is that my Z isomer, my reactant is 0 0.24 bar, and my E isomer, my product, is 0 0.76 bar. So notice that the Gibbs energy of formation of the product is lower than that of the formation of the reactant. So my standard Gibbs energy was negative. So my equilibrium constant was greater than 1. So what I ended up having is, what I end up having here is the product ends up being more favored than the reactant due to it having a lower standard Gibbs energy of formation.